So over the last two years, I had a great time using Godot on my side project, Stop the Slimes. But in August of 2021, I went back to school part-time to get my master's while still working at a mobile game company remotely. This brought the YouTube channel to basically a standstill. Except for showing my game and giving a talk at a small festival, which was a blast. Anyway, toward the end of the semester, I had the chance for one of my master classes to write a project in Python. The professor okayed my team using GD Script. So in the three-ish weeks, my wife and I rewrote Stop the Slimes into GD Script. This, this was really fun. I hadn't done a big project in GD Script. I had done a couple of small things. I think I did maybe two game jams in it. But at the end of the semester, it turned out that my game teacher was going to be stepping down and I was recommended um, for the job. So in short, I, I got the job. My first semester being a full-time instructor was spring of 2022. In that semester, I taught five classes, but the one that I enjoyed the most was computer graphics. When I took the class in college, it was taught using OpenGL 1.1, um, sometimes referred to as uh, legacy OpenGL. But I wanted to teach something a little newer. Um, so initially, I took a look at Vulkan, and I realized very quickly that Vulkan though it's great would not be a great like first introductory into computer graphics so i kept on looking and i found uh, the website slash book learn opengl this is a great resource it is a free resource um, i will i'll show you know the website here but if you're interested definitely check it out I based the course around that. Uh, to say that I enjoyed teaching that class would be a vast understatement. I started doing game jams in C++ and OpenGL and writing some small demos as a way to have a better understanding of C++. There was something in the technical part of my brain that couldn't get enough. To learn how to make games go faster, how to use the PC's hardware better, as well as understanding, you know, when you're using a game engine like Godot or Unity, what what's really happening under the hood? As the semester came to an end, where I finished taking two classes and teaching five, it was a stressful time again, no time for the YouTube channel, I came to a crossroads. Do I continue to learn more about C++ and OpenGL and rewrite stop the slimes or go back to working in Godot. I decided that making the decision to fully switch over from Godot on this project to C++ without having made um, but one game jam in C++ at the start of the semester, that that would be kind of a recipe for failure. Um, or at least that I didn't, I didn't know if I could or not, I guess. It's the best way of putting it. Like I, I made one 2D game jam, but a 2D game jam and a 3D game, um, which I'd want to ship on multiple platforms are two different things. So I figured out, you know, I have a little bit of time in the summer. I'm, I think at the time was taking two classes in the summer semester, but I had enough time to give a month to rewriting like a prototype of stop the slimes um, in C++ and if I could do that in a month then I knew that I you know maybe hard um, but I could eventually rewrite the game it ended up the prototype took a month that that turned out good um, rewriting the game took way longer <laughs> than expected as you could probably guess at this point yeah it was a little crazy to do my first 3D project and give it some kind of like time lock like that. But here's the results. Y yes, it's hacky, but it's proof that I can do it. Uh, you may notice that there's just text in the bottom left 
that highlights or changes colors whenever um, it's it's available to press. There there were no buttons in this in this point. Everything was done with the mouse um, or or the keyboard's number row. There there wasn't any menus as you can probably guess from not having any buttons. Um, the game was was just slimes hopping out of a portal going down a path a star style and uh and getting shot and as, as you can see um i just went back to an old commit and the one that i picked apparently the green slimes are like a solid like double their height above the ground for some reason which kind of breaks the game because if you put down a spike tower um it doesn't deal any damage because they don't hit the spikes. So that that wasn't great, you know, but it was close enough, in my opinion, um, that I decided to go with it. So uh, just to go over, you know, from July to October, I worked on building um, some systems in the game that would, or not the game, but more the game engine, um, that would make it better. So before i wait okay no actually yeah so before i wasn't using um init e n t t i'll have a link uh, below it's a entity uh component system similar to unity dots um uh, very fast very performant i was not using that uh, for that demo apparently i think i was just using arrays of of structures it worked and so I used I added that to the engine and I end up building a lot of the engine around it um, and I also added the free type uh, library this library is used to render fonts and let's see what else um, now this was already in there but I end up adding more uh, from it so I was using SDL 2 for the windowing and glue as the OpenGL uh, library. So I am currently calling uh, the engine Canis. And in the last two weeks, 2022 in December, I have rewritten uh, the game in Canis. I will say looking back, it was not entirely re rewritten. Um, but as far as you guys knew uh, from the YouTube devlogs, it was. So from the last devlog, I did actually work probably another month on the project in Godot and added some new features. I added an endless mode and a level uh, selector and a couple other things that at this point were not there. But the core of the game had been rewritten. Starting the spring semester, I had been working on Stop the Slimes for quite a while, off and on, and I kind of wanted to work on a new project for a little bit, take a, take a bit of a break. Um, so I entered into the Global Game Jam in early February, and at that game uh, jam we made, um, I, was on a, I was on a decent sized team, uh, so we made um, Garden of Doom. It's a base the game around vampire survivors so the theme of the game jam was root so we had uh, plants that would come in waves and attack you um, you had a kind of seed that you could plant we didn't end up getting art for that so we used this health apple uh, and it would grow it would grow what was supposed to be a pickup we did end up getting the pickup but hey you know <laughs> it's a game jam uh, so this was actually like a big milestone for the engine. So, and I haven't, I haven't spoke about each game jam that I've done so far. Um, but each game jam that I've done with the engine has been kind of like a step forward in some way for the engine. 2D, a lot of new 2D things were added. 2D animations were added. A lot of UI work was done. I believe there was, there was text before, um, but the button system was improved and i did this as kind of like the january going in to the game jam i knew it was going to do a 2d project 
So I was able to get a lot of these systems in and improved before the game jam. But one major thing that was added uh, literally the night before the game jam started was a separate scene file, which ended up being amazing for the game jam because it let um, it let more people work. Previously, everything was in C++. Every scene was inheriting from uh, the scene class. And it was a bit difficult um, to work like that. It also meant that every time you wanted to make any change to the game, if you if your text was a little bit off, a few pixels off, you had to rebuild the engine. <laughs> uh, now the the rebuild time was only about ten seconds. It wasn't it's not crazy, um, but at some point the ten seconds adds up and gets pretty annoying. Uh, so being able to just edit the scene file. <laughs> Um, I think I think saved a lot of hair hair pulling in the game jam. Uh, also, the animation file and having the scene file separate, not in code like that, allowed a couple of uh, new people to game development. We had a freshman on our team, and he was able to focus on setting up the animations, uh, tweaking and doing balancing because a lot of our variables were sitting in those scene files. Um, and so he was able to contribute a lot to the to the team uh, by doing that. Uh, also, another feature that got into Canis, I made a simple wrapper around SDL uh, Mixer. Now, as you've seen through the last video that's been playing, there's been a lot of updates to Stop the Slime, including a card system. And if you want to check that out in the link in the, in the description, um, it'll take you to itch and I have the newest build of the game there and in the next devlog I will talk about those new features while you're down there in the description remember to like subscribe uh, join the discord if you want to I do post there um, every time I make a new build of the game and um, ask for feedback and that's where you could submit bug reports those kinds of things um, if you find anything which you probably will I hope to see you next time. Bye.